This House Tour is presented by the completely reborn Hyundai Santa Fe. Wah changes everything. We're in a classic Rosedale Heritage home in Toronto. This is, I think, the biggest semi-detached house I've ever seen in my life. It, it does not feel like a semi. It feels like a standalone home. She is an old lady. This is a classic Victorian home. And so there were a lot of structural issues that had developed over time. It wasn't tremendously well insulated. It had been a rooming house and many people had owned it. So a lot of the heritage details had been removed or compromised in some way. So we really wanted to layer back in the charm that had been stripped out over time. As a classic home with a center hall plan, it's important that when you walk in, you have this moment that invites you into the house. So for durability and that aesthetic, we did a custom marble inlay in the foyer that defines it as its own unique space. We've got this fantastic Murano glass chandelier, but the thing that I actually love is the compass rose medallion that we mounted above it. This is the foyer and the house branches out in many directions and this compass rose that points in all those directions kind of has a, a, a little moment to beckon you into different spaces. When you line up a series of doorways so you can see through rooms, that's called an enfilade. And that was something that we wanted to include architecturally. We had a window with an arch on the exterior, and so we wanted to echo that throughout the home. So you walk through the arch into the living room, and we really had a lot of fun with paneling and molding in this space. I am so excited about this. I carry it around with me everywhere I go. Uh, so this is going to be our crown molding, custom made plaster work that's gonna go right up at the ceiling. We opted to give each room its own character with the architectural elements that we brought in. So in here, it's all about fluting and accentuating the height of the space. So you'll see that echoed in the crown, in the chair rail going around the room. And then there's just little moments of that linear graphic quality, even in the pieces of furniture that got selected. When we walked through the house the first time, I was blown away by the gorgeous radiators that they have. These rads are original and the pattern work that is on the front, it's just got such character, I love it. We took them off site, sandblasted them, made sure they were all water and airtight and brought them back. And we actually redistributed them. We weren't able to save all of them, so we did have to sneak in a few more contemporary pieces. So we've done things like we've hidden one under the bar over there. You know, that didn't need to be a classic piece because it's gonna be disguised. So we saved them for, you know, the hero rooms, the living room, the dining room, the principal bedroom suite. Like a lot of heritage homes, this has not one, but actually three fireplaces. And only one of them can actually have a real fire lit in it, and it's this living room unit. We removed the old mantle, which was just kind of clunky and, and really wasn't original to the home. And we sourced this gorgeous piece by Trumo Stones and did it in like an onyx black with just a very thin white vein to give us a really anchoring dramatic focal point for the room. Across from the living room, you go through those arches again and you get to the dining room, which has another fantastic fireplace and beautiful architectural molding as well. But we've shifted the vibe in there. Because you don't put as much furniture into a dining room, we thought we could bring in a little bit more delicacy and ornate moments into the paneling. So you'll see the corners have this beautiful little organic floral detail. We've got these gorgeous folded brass sconces and we flanked those on either side of the fireplace so that there's a nice balance there. But then we brought in just a really delicate contemporary chandelier that kind of just floats over the table. I think in spaces like the dining room, it's always really important to strike a balance. Just a simple envelope for what's going on inside the room where you've got these beautiful, stronger profiles contrasted against that ornate quality. Behind the dining room wall is the kitchen. And we wanted this space to live up to the classic and historic moments that we've built into the rest of the first floor, but it still needs to work for a young and growing family. Behind this plywood, you can't tell, but you can see the daylight peeking through. We used to have a window just as small as those two over here. We enlarged this huge factory window to really bring a lot of light in from the backyard. 
It features a really nice built-in banquette area. And then we tucked a pantry unit onto the party wall that's got our microwave, our wine fridge, all the breakfast appliances. That builds in some additional storage and functionality into the space. And then the heart of the kitchen is working around the island. We established a really classic hob built in around their gorgeous Le Cornu stove. And we had a custom troweled hood that comes down and the legs sit on the counter done by Lime Thistle Plastering. He's one of the only people who has that technique available in Toronto. So very happy to have him involved in working on that for us. And then Heritage Kitchens just did this stunning kitchen. There are so many layers in the drawers, so many built-ins. Marble countertops are not for everybody, but it was something that was really important to the clients. The veining is gorgeously strong. And we spent a lot of time with the fabricator laying out, you know, this piece is gonna be the island, this needs to be the backsplash in the hood. I love the little moment of the apron in front of the sink. So we actually have a stainless steel sink and it's not apron front, but then the marble comes down and gives you that moment and it's just a beautiful detail. In addition to the brass hardware on the cabinets, we have these beautiful brass pendants over the island. And to me, they have that classic, I've never seen a honey hive look like the Winnie the Pooh honey hive, but they've got that nice line to them. It took us a long time to plan the kitchen, but I think at the end of the day, we've established a really functional and just gorgeous kitchen. I always think that powder rooms should have a jewel box quality. We found this gorgeous Indian onyx and it's this green, it's stunning. It's got this beautiful fluted front and then we continued that fluting on an arced backsplash that we built all the way around. So the whole thing is just this beautiful piece of marble. And then when it came time to paint it, we thought, well, the natural balance to this green is to bring in that sort of clay pink. So those two together make this really rich environment that we then just accent with a little bit of brass and it's a beautiful space. We have the formal foyer, but actually for day-to-day -day use, the family uses the back door. So the kitchen is half a flight of stairs up from the back door. And if you continue down into the basement, you get to the mud room. We were able to build them a ton of storage. They're an active family. She's a horseback rider. He plays sports. But by and large, it's all behind doors. So the chaos can be contained in those areas. When we walked through the house, at first, I found these stunning buttercream yellow cast iron enamel sinks in the basement. And I get to love it because I didn't have to lift it. So one of them made its way into the mudroom as this great utility sink. We built it in to a really rugged, durable Caesar stone countertop, but put a little backsplash on there, classed it up with a little bit of English country charm. It's been literally in this house for over a hundred years, and I love that it's still here, just like the rads. It's sort of this classic moment. The clients had a really strong color story in mind. The entire palette of the house is built off of the Pharaoh and Ball palette. And we wanted the main floor to feel airy, but not cold. So we really wanted a very uniform palette and then moments where you'll get a little more depth and color, a little more richness. And you'll see those subtle tones and accents repeated throughout the decor that Clarissa Janessa and her team took on throughout the house. The house on its own was just gorgeous and the work that Maya and her team had done was so spectacular that we wanted to make sure that we didn't compete with it. We wanted to complement it versus go against it. We play a lot with tones on tones, so the drapery, we wanted to make something that was identical almost to the walls, which was a lot of trial and error. And then with the furniture, we wanted something a little bit warm, but still modern, but still have enough strength that it didn't just fall flat. We wanted to have a little bit of contrast, but just enough with more muted palmish sofa and then more of a green grayish tone that we wanted just to, again, bring that color without having to stand out too much because we knew also that with all of the objects that the couple was going to bring and the art that they were gonna bring into the space, that was also going to bring the space even more to life. At the top of the stairs, when you get to the second floor, you just go straight into the principal suite. It's actually directly above the living room. So it has the floor plate of the living room. So that lends itself to splitting up the activities in that room. 
We built in a beautiful mantle and did some bookcases on either side just to create a bit more of a homey, soft vibe. And it also carries up the architecture of that end of the room from the living room. And then there's that stunning bay window that again comes up. So there's just so much gorgeous natural light coming into the room that all we wanted to do was just create that traditional envelope and then let the decoration be what really brought all the coziness into that space. The ensuite is a tight fit, I will say. We worked really hard to get everything that we wanted in that space. So it's got a soaker tub, a double vanity, a separate toilet area you know, for privacy, and a steam shower, all in a pretty tight footprint. We had hoped initially that we would be able to put the tub in the bay window area, but as we demolished that area, we realized that there was no way it was gonna hold a human being, a tub, and a bathtub full of water. This is a problem that we've inherited. This bay window haunts my dreams. It does take up a little bit more floor space than we had hoped it would, but that's sometimes what happens, especially when you're working in a historic house. We made it work. We stole a couple of inches from the vanity, and I have to say, having put my makeup on for this interview in that mirror, it's nice to be a little bit closer. <laughs> you don't need that much depth. The jumping off point for us in that bathroom is absolutely the marble mosaic, where you see, again, that clay pink. We have Taj Mahal quartzite. We brought that in because it doesn't compete with the floor. Rather, it just brings out the tones in it that we wanted. And so that lets us have the fluted vanity. That really brings the grounding, the deeper tone, and lets everything else in the room just be light and bright. And so it makes it feel a little bit more spacious. The planning in the closet has a million little moments where you wouldn't necessarily think things are hidden, like the storage bench at the end. And we trimmed everything out like we did the rest of the house. And so when you have a, you know, a baseboard that's this tall, you can be putting out of season sweaters and stuff in there. So we really, from floor to ceiling, tried to absolutely maximize the storage space for them. The Ensuite and the walk-in closet are gonna come to pretty much here. I am the wall. And then from here over, this is going to be a new office. They wanted the ability to have a large desk area where potentially two people could work. And the nice thing about it is that we had this long, narrow space so that obviously lent itself to a wraparound desk. And then as the room opens up a little bit, as it gets past the dining room chimney, that's where we were able to put a little bit more circulation, a little more lounge space, and a lot more storage and display. Next to the office is the guest bathroom. So we did continue a little bit of that slightly more masculine energy when we were picking the materials for in there. It's black and white and just really clean and simple. But my Tyler did want to kill me when I told them that we wanted an arched shower. That was a challenge, but they worked it out. I'm very proud of how it came out. I think they did a great job. Uh, but yeah, when I first suggested it, they, they wanted to kill me. The most striking thing about the office slash guest room is this fantastic envelope of this gorgeous warm pink. It happens to be the client's favorite color. And so we just wanted to give her this really saturated environment that she gets to enjoy every day. Most of the time she's using it as her office, but it's also got a really nice bed in there and a wardrobe, and so it can double as a guest room and, of course, is right next to the guest bathroom for convenience. So with all of the rooms that we've gone through on the first and second floor, the third floor is kind of the kid's zone. And the interesting challenges up there, it is a very tall home, but at the same time, it comes up and then you have a lot of roof lines. So planning those spaces was an interesting challenge. You'll see the ceiling of the shower slopes, and so we were trying to find ways to make that the most functional space possible. And then at the end of the room, you'll actually see that original arched window. And we nooked the toilet into there. And we really liked that soft, sagey green that we'd been using throughout the house. So that's where we focused on. The truth is when we designed that room, the kid who uses it was not born yet. So we wanted to deliberately make a space that was just gonna work for anybody and be just this really soft, integrated palette with the rest of the house. It's incredibly satisfying, especially on a project where you've collaborated with other people and we used so much of the client's own taste to develop it, to see it all come together as just a really cohesive space. 
It has a gorgeous aesthetic, but it's also incredibly functional. Like I've been back several times since the clients have been here and just to see them using the space and see all the little tips and tricks and things that we built in working for them, it's really satisfying. I'm really proud of this project. I think everybody who worked on it gave it their all and it really shows.